says, who's the guy who starts fascism? Good. Who is it, Jessica? Mussolini. Mussolini. All right. So <clears throat> let's get us started here. I have a bunch of photos I want to show you. So the reason why fascism is really going to grow is because of all the turmoil because of the Great Depression. So when we talk about the Great Depression, it's important that you understand how severe it was uh, here in the United States and around the world. So <clears throat> when we talk about the Great Depression, does anyone know who these two are? Jack? Bonnie and Clyde, absolutely, they're going to be great American icons and heroes because, frankly, don't you want to be rich by robbing a bank? Yeah. Absolutely, and during the Great Depression, when times are really, really tough and banks are closing, people have lost their entire income, these two go and rob it. And they're absolutely madly in love with each other, so that only adds to the stories and everything else, and people adore them. All right, here are our soup kitchen lines here in Times Square. Okay, give jobs, men are, wa men are out of jobs, women, everyone is out of jobs. Dust Bowl is going to have negative consequences. So not only are people out of jobs and can't afford to feed, pay to feed their family, there's also less food here in the United States. Same thing is found around the world. Um, stock market crashes. Uh, who can raise your hand and tell me what year the stock market crashes? Jack? 1929, October 24th. So, out of this, now the United States has a very strong democracy. At this point, we've been around for about 150 years, correct? Well implemented, it's in place. FDR is there trying to make changes, doing everything he needs to do. Around the world, uh, democracies are going to be put into place post World War One, and those are going to fail because of um, lack of experiences, lack of foundation and grounding. So because of that, we're going to see fascism rise. Now, fascism is going to be based on militarism. Every country that calls themselves a fascist country is going to be a militaristic country. Italy, uh, this is the country that is pictured right there. Italy is going to be um, the first country to do it. Now, it's important to know that when you are taking over a country and making it a fascist state, it is going to be indoctrinating the children. If you and why would Hitler, Mussolini, Spain also try to indoctrinate the children? Why are children a huge focus? It's about they're the future. They're the future, but really, why? Because they would grow up and they would like. Yes. So if I taught you when you were a little kid that Miss Bennett is the greatest person in the whole wide world, by the time you got to me in high school, would you even challenge that thought? No, absolutely not. You're going to be incredibly uh, reliant and stuff like that. So here's Mussolini. Those are all people. Okay. Remember when the relationship first starts, Mussolini is the power. Hitler is like the adoring teenager. Doesn't he look uncomfortable? That's what I love. Is like he's so uncomfortable. He's like, oh my god, I'm standing next. It's like me standing next to Beyonce. Like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's Beyonce. You know, that's how Hitler felt about Mussolini at the beginning of the war. That's gonna end really quickly once the war starts. So this is his headquarters. <laughs> that's his face. Now, when you have a fascist state, you have to have police terror. What is police terror? You're gonna want to write that down. Police terror is gonna be used in a fascist state. What is police terror? Max. Absolutely, and they want you to feel like the state is constantly watching you. Does that building not look like it's watching you? <laughs> yeah, it's really real? creepy. But yeah, this is his headquarters in Rome. That was his headquarters in Rome. I'm watching you. I know what you're doing. It's a complete police state. Okay? So, now when we talk about fascism, it's all based on a strong leader. All of your strong leaders, Hitler... Uh, Mussolini, they're going to be really strong orators, which means they have a, uh, an incredible um, <coughs> ability to speak, something quite unlike myself. Um, so when you talk about Mussolini, now Mussolini is going to talk in a beat, in a pattern. You've all heard Obama speak, correct? Whether you like Obama or not, you can agree that when he speaks, you're kind of waiting for the next thing he says, yes? Hello, you're kind of hanging on every word. Same thing with... Um, Bill Clinton. Have you ever heard Bill Clinton speak? He's the same way. Bill Clinton, I don't know if you saw him, I think the last time, the Democratic Convention, where they officially nominated Hillary as the official candidate of the Democratic, public, uh, Democratic um, candidate. Well, if Bill Clinton can just tell you a story, and you have no idea where it's going, but you're just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and you're like, how did we get here? He was talking about them dating and stuff like that. He is also a great orator. Mussolini speaks in a pattern. He's like, uh, 
boom, boom, boom. I have audio of them if you really care. But Hitler is really cool. Hitler bangs on the podium in a pattern, which means you're hearing what I'm saying in a pattern, and you're constantly just waiting for the next word to fall. Which I'm not sure. He bangs on his pattern in a certain way that the whole crowd just like gets super into it, and that's why they rage. It's really cool. Okay, I love this photo because he looks like a turtle. <laughs> I have a bunch of really unflattering photos of them because it just makes me happy. So, turtle. Okay, like I said, we have to indoctrinate young children. They're the future. It's important that you understand that fascist leaders are really, really well loved. They're loved because they're saying things that the people want to hear. Times are tough. The economics are, uh, the economy is low. People are starving. People are hungry. Um, people are demoralized. And they're coming up and saying, you're great, you're special, you're loved, we are great, we're going to do it. So people love him. Okay, obviously we know who Hitler is. Okay, he's going to rise in power. This is um, his military. Militaristic, militaristic, militaristic. Now, Hitler violates the Treaty of Versailles in five ways pre-Declaration of World War II. You're going to want to write this down. First way, so I write, Hitler's violations of the Treaty of Versailles. First thing is... Builds the largest military in the world. Boys, the Treaty of Versailles. His Treaty of Versailles limited his military to 250,000 people. By the time World War II breaks out in 1939, he has over a million people. A little bit of a difference. Second way he does it is he builds up an air force. Okay? Specifically in the Treaty of Versailles, it says Hitler's not allowed to have an air force. So what does he do? himself an air force. Okay, and we'll get to three, four, and five here in a second. All right, so here's his military. Here's his classroom. In every single classroom, you're going to see Hitler's face right in the center of the board. So if the teacher wants to write a math problem out, he has to write it around here on his other whiteboard. He is the focus of the country. What? I know. Could you imagine? It would be just so awkward. He's just like literally staring you down as you're sitting in class. Yeah, it's a it's a fascist state. Absolutely, it's just like if you know, imagine if we had like Obama on our wall, and then now that we have Trump, he's just sitting there staring at you like that, because it's the idol of having that strong leader. We don't have that. We have this. Okay, the United States has barred it, so you cannot have, we don't force images of the president because the president is represented by the flag, and the flag is more important. That's the laws we passed in order to avoid that. Okay, we have book burnings, all that stuff. Here we have Hitler. Look at all of his adoring fans. We got some propaganda. Okay, look at my man saying hello. Okay, this is, I love this photo. That is a man to behold. Look at that. The man can't wear pants that fit him. <laughs> that maybe are a little more flattering. I just think it's funny. Okay? How can you take that serious? How can you take that serious? His tie is short. His pants. I mean, like, is there a seamstress in Germany? Anyway, so we got all of our people walking. This is one of my favorite photos. This is during the 1939 um, Olympics, pre-invasion of the Summer Olympics. This is, like, a couple months before Hitler invades Poland. You can see the mass... Uh, crowds behind him. I just think it's a really cool shot, don't you think? This is a really cool photo. Okay, all of the people. This is you guys if you're in Germany in 1939. The kids loved him. Kids loved him. He was very, very popular amongst the youth. Okay, okay, you'd go to summer camp every single summer and learn how to be good little Hitler followers. It was great. Okay, <coughs> public speeches, his rise to power, great orator. Okay, <coughs> becomes leader. This is his niece. Um, his niece was very, very close to Hitler. Um, after World War II, she kills himself. She kills herself. Her two older brothers are going to sterilize themselves after World War II because they're so horrified by what their uncle did. No one in the world today has Hitler's blood. Is a direct descendant of Hitler or in a direct, like, one generation. Obviously, his cousins and stuff like that are still, you know, cake men, but a lot of them don't. Okay? This is a pensive Hitler. This is a propaganda Hitler. And then Crystal Notch, a complete destruction of your Jewish businesses, synagogues. Obviously, they start having a, the Star of David. It's important that you understand the United States knew what was happening. 
we knew exactly what was happening. FDR refused. Um, a ship of Jewish immigrants from Germany, only Jews, on a ship, paid for a ship, came to the United States, landed in New York. FDR refused to let them in, and they had to go back to Germany. Only one of the 300-and-something people on that ship survived World War II. We knew what was happening. We knew before we showed up in the death camps what was happening at the um, at like Auschwitz. We had an idea. We knew what was happening. We knew who they were being targeted. Dean. So we've got two of the five violations. Oh, I know. We got to get there. I'm trying to show you some pictures. I love it. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm, you ruin everything. <coughs> so, the first violation. You skip down a couple spaces. Skip down like three sections. First violations against the Treaty of Versailles. Write it down. Skip down three <coughs> sections. I'm skipping. So you have one through five. Skip down a couple lines and write the first violations of the Treaty of Versailles. First thing, Mussolini invades Ethiopia. Who can raise your hand? Tell me why Mussolini would just get up and invade Ethiopia. Why as well? Italy lost it. Like yes. Italy lost Ethiopia during the scramble of Africa. So, once Mussolini has fully industrialized Italy, knows that they're one of a world power now because they've fully industrialized and they're building up their military like crazy, he has a militaristic state, the man has an ego, can we agree? And uh, wouldn't you agree that most Italians would have a bruised ego about losing Ethiopia? Hello? So what he does in order to continue to show how wonderful Italy does, he just packs up one day, heads to Ethiopia and invades like out of nowhere, and invades and takes over the country and kills uh, about one-third of the population, just completely disseminates the entire population. So that's a revenge. The second thing is Japan is going to invade Manchuria. Japan invades Manchuria. Put in parentheses, this is what happened first. I got really excited about Italy. And Jap Japan's invasion of, Man of Manchuria um, was the first thing that happened. Okay, nothing is done about it. So, Hitler sees, Hit, uh, Mussolini has invaded Ethiopia, Europe's done nothing. Hitler knows that Japan has invaded Manchuria, Europe's done nothing. So Hitler's sitting there and saying, ooh, <coughs> let me do this. So, the first, the next thing that Hitler does to avoid the Treaty of Versailles is he invades the Rhineland. He invades the Rhineland. Okay. This is a territory now belonging to France post-World War I. It was given to France during the Treaty of Versailles. The Rhineland belonged to France post-World War I. It has traditionally belonged to Germany. Hitler goes in, snatches it, and says, Oh my God, it's mine now. And England and France do nothing. Do nothing. So Hitler's like, oh my god, I've got no consequences. So, if you got away with something, would you learn your lesson and not do it again, or would you do it again? You would do it again. So he invades the Sudanland, which is right here. The Sudanland was also a territory taken away from Germany after World War II. After World War I. Huh? This, this is for you. Where is Sudan? Sudanland? Oh, it's right in between France and Germany. Okay, it's like a region. So, he takes the Sudanland. After the Sudanland, we have the Munich Conference. Go write down the Munich Conference as your five. Build up, what was that? Build up our first, Rhineland, invade Rhineland, invade Sudanland, and then we have the Munich Conference. In the Munich Conference, in the Munich Conference, you're going to want to write this down because this is absolutely on your test on Thursday. The Munich Conference is between Italy, France, England, Germany. Four countries get together at the Munich Conference. During this time period, okay, what we're going to see is that England and France are going to appease. And you need to know that word. Appeasement is definitely on your test. At the Munich Conference, it's a meeting between Italy, Germany, France, and England. And England and France are going to appease Germany. Who can tell me what does appeasement mean? Max? Like they're going to please them. They're going to do whatever they want. So at this meeting, Hitler says he wants Czechoslovakia. 
And England and France are like, oh, Hitler, do you have to have Czechoslovakia? And England, and, and Hitler's like, oh my god, Czechoslovakia means so much to me. And if I get Czechoslovakia, I will be a satisfied power. I'll just be so happy, and I won't have to take anything else. And everyone's like, fine, Hitler, you can have Czechoslovakia, but like, scout's honor, pinky promise that you're not going to take any more. And Hitler's like, oh my god, cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye, I swear I will not take it. So guess what he gets? Czechoslovakia. And Hitler, as he's leaving, he's like, oh my god, do you think it could have Poland? And England and France is like, no, no Poland, no Poland. And he's like, uh -huh, just kidding. So anyway, he leaves, he gets Czechoslovakia. So now he has the Rhine and the Sudetenland and Czechoslovakia. Now, Hitler is a bit of a, a turd, can we agree? He later said, after that meeting, like three months later, that if England and France said no to the Sudetenland and said no to Czechoslovakia, he would have backed down because he wasn't ready to declare war to take those two territories. But in the time period from the Munich Conference until September 1st, 1939, his military was in full shape, ready to go, so he was ready to declare war. So how, how bratty is that? How bratty is that? What a big jerk. So, what's going to happen is that, so, that's your fifth, is the Munich Conference. Right number six, right, six below it, I want six, and Invasion of Poland. It's the final show. And that's going to happen on September 1st, 1939. Hey, Dave, are you mad at me? Yeah, because you said I'm sorry, I know, 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 I know. You'll be fine. Squeeze it in there. <laughs> it's September 1st, 1939. September 1st, 1939. You can write it wherever you like, Dean. Because we're coming back to it. All right. Non-aggression pact. You write it down. Non-aggression pact is going to be signed between Germany and Russia. What? No, this is a new thing. This is a whole new heading. Uh, Non-aggression pact is going to be signed between Eng uh, between R Germany and Russia. Russia has a lot going on. This is 1939. They have finally got their feet on the ground and are now fully industrialized. But do you think they want to start a fight with the most powerful country in the world? So they're like, oh my god, non-aggression pact? Absolutely. And Hitler's like, you know what, Russia, I'm just so glad we're besties again. You know what, if I take over Poland, maybe in the near future, I'll give you half. So Russia's like, oh my god, we're going to be friends? And I get things? This is so great. All right. So they sign a non-aggression pact, okay? So once he has that in place, he then is going to invade Poland. World War II starts on September 1st, 1939, with the invasion of Poland. Hitler did not think England and France would declare war over Poland. But the policy of appeasement has clearly failed, correct? He keeps getting, 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 getting. And so England and France declare war on September 1st, 1939. Any of you seen the King's Speech? Good movie. Some parts of it? Yeah. What part of the scene? I've seen it. I've seen it. It's a speech impediment, the whole movie. Yeah. The end of the movie is September 1st, 1939, with Hitler's invasion of Poland. And he has to make a speech on the radio and say, you know, and Germany is invaded, we're going to war. Okay? All right, to the boards. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the first territory Hitler takes? What is the name of the first territory Hitler takes? Good. Come on, come on, come on. Alexandra, what is it? Rhineland. Rhineland. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the second territory Hitler takes? Good. What is it? What's the second, Molly? Student land. What is the gathering of England, France, Italy, and Germany called? Well, they sit around and talk about it. And England and France give in to whatever Hitler wants in order to avoid war. What is it, Cheyenne? <laughs> Munich Conference. Absolutely. Munich Conference. What is it called when England and France give in to whatever Germany wants in order to avoid war? Hence why he gets Rhineland, Sudetenland, Czechoslovakia. What is it? Uh, Vanessa? Appeasement. On your whiteboard, please tell me what country does Hitler get from the Munich Conference? 
What country does Hitler get from the Munich conference? Good. What is it, Sophia? Czechoslovakia. On your whiteboard, what day was World War II declared? Good. What is this? <laughs> What is it, Isabella? September 1st, 1939. September 1st, 1939, with the invasion of what country? Is World War II declared? Good, good. All right, what is it, Maya? Poland. Poland. All right. <clears throat> So September 1st, 1939, we have the invasion of Poland. So Germany, now that it obviously has German territory, obviously now that it has Czechoslovakia, it's also going to conquer a little bit north of it, which is the territory of the Sudanland. Okay? Now they have a three-prong attack. In this three-prong attack, do you think Poland stands a shot? Okay, so with the invasion of Poland, Hitler puts on display for the first time this thing called Blitzkrieg, and you need to have this down. Blitzkrieg is his type of warfare. It has a nickname, I'm stealing this. It has a nickname of Lightning War. Okay? So, with Blitzkrieg, it goes aerial bombing, which is your high level bombers who are just literally obliterating whatever they're hitting. Second wave is fast moving tanks. Third wave is overwhelming troop amount numbers. All right, it's supposed to surprise and overwhelm whoever is there. Poland falls in three days. France falls in four. In a week, it's, it's not all at the same time, but in a week he took over two major countries. Like that's a big deal. That's blitzkrieg. The world has never seen anything like it. Now over here, the first country to experience Blitzkrieg is Poland. This, it was tested in Spain. You know how we talked about this painting called Guernica? Yes? Cubism? Okay. Guernica is about Hitler's testing of Blitzkrieg. He tested the high-level bombers, all this stuff, all the different strategies. That was their playground until they unleashed it on Poland. Okay? The only country that is not conquered by Blitzkrieg is what country? Max. Okay, brain never falls. You're correct. What country that was conquered did not experience Blitzkrieg? Isabel. Norway? No, Norway has its own problems. Norway fights back, mostly because of Soviet strikes. France is the answer here, ladies and gentlemen. France does not experience Blitzkrieg. Why? Why? No. No, they get taken. Uh, Hitler doesn't want to destroy the city of France. <coughs> He doesn't want to destroy it. He needs the art. Remember, he's an art school failure. Alright, we good? So, Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg's the style. Alexander, what's up? What does the second step say? Oh, fast moving tanks. Micah. Surprise. Uh, surprise and overwhelms. Okay? So, it's incredibly effective. Okay? Everyone knows that Hitler invades. Okay, here he is waiting for the news of his invasion of Poland. Please note the cute little dog. Okay, waiting in great anticipation. Remember, this is his brainchild. He didn't, he didn't think England and France would declare war over Poland. No one really cares about Poland. So he didn't think it would be that big of a deal. Because it's not really, it's not a Western power, they're not industrialized, really. He didn't think they would go to war over it. So he was kind of surprised and caught off guard about that. But England and France were tired of giving in to him. And when we talk about it, England and France are going to declare war that night. Um, the Prime Minister of England, pre-Winston Churchill, I can't think of his name at the moment, um, he didn't think Hitler would declare war and invade another country. He never thought. He didn't think he was that bad. He always thought Hitler would just quit, stop. He was not a bad guy. He resigns on September 1st, 1939. Guess who was put into the Prime Minister's position on September 1st, 1939? <coughs> Winston Churchill. Okay, Winston Churchill will be Prime Minister of England. Um, he'll do it twice, actually. He'll do it during, um, obviously, World War II, and he'll do it about 10 years after World War II. All right, so we have the high-level bombing. This is Warsaw, which is the capital of Poland. Please note that this is not a military war solely. It's a military and civilian war. They're literally just blowing up cities and conquering it. Okay, so synagogues are attacked and all that stuff. So England and France declare war. They go and fight, 
and that's good for that. I'm switching to my other one. That was enough pictures for a little bit. Can we agree? All right. So when we talk about the Second War, wo World War overall, you need to know that you have two teams. You have the Axis powers and the Allied powers. Axis powers are Germany, Italy, Japan. Your Allied powers are Britain and France. U.S. is going to join in 1941. What year does the war start, though, ladies and gentlemen? 1939. So the U.S. is not involved. Who can raise your hand and tell me when does the U.S. get involved in World War II? Oh, my God, you all should have your hands up. <coughs> Reed. 1941, because of what, Reed? Don't do this to me, Reed. Don't do this. Why did we get involved? Yes. Thank you, John. All right. So we get bombed in 1941 at Pearl Harbor. That's how we get into the war. 1939, there's only two countries fighting England and France. Okay? So. Okay. All right. So let's talk about what's going on in Japan. Because we can't get into the war until Japan's going. Okay, so Japan is going to invade and take over Manchuria in 1931. This is the first violation of the Treaty of Versailles um, after World War I. They're going to invade. It's a full-scale invasion by 1937, which means it's full occupation, and they're not even trying to hide it. Okay, now we have a thing called the Rape of Neijing. They're going to aerial bomb the urban center. They are then going to move 400,000 Chinese for bayonet practice, which means they just line them up and they just stab them in different ways to figure out which way is more effective in killing. 400,000 people are going to be lined up and they're just going to practice stabbing them. Okay. Then we have things called uh, comfort women. And this is actually a really big thing um, <coughs> that's going on right now. China, Japan has never acknowledged what has happened in Beijing. They also haven't been held accountable for what they did to the city of Beijing at all by the UN and all of the sanctions post-World War II. Uh, last year, a woman who was raped in, who became a comfort woman. Does anyone know what a comfort woman is? Max? It's sort of like a wife you take out for. Kind of. That's a really lovely answer for it. Um, Lily? Yeah, so they take comfort women are taken from China, brought to Japanese base, and they're just being essentially gang raped by men the whole time. So the men don't have to be lonely. They have these things called comfort women, and that's what the 7,000 women are going to be. They're literally just imported. Um, if you wanted to kill your comfort woman, you could, because frankly, they're there to make you happy. That is what is happening with the Japanese in China. So when you talk to a Japanese uh, Chinese person and you call them Japanese and they get really pissed, this would be a perfect example of why um, the terrible things the Japanese are doing. Uh, one third of all homes in China are going to be completely destroyed. And Manchuria are going to be completely destroyed. Now, they are going to sign a neutrality pact with Soviet Union. Why is Japan going to go after Soviet Union sign a neutrality? Why? What do they share with Japan, uh, Russia? A border, yes, yes, okay, so they're going to sign that. Now the Chinese resistance, so the Japanese are going to be absolutely hated, they're still hated, they still don't get along with each other. Um, Japanese aggression is going to create a united front between the Chinese communists and the nationalists. All, everyone's going to unify against the Japanese, we start having guerrilla warfare. Please do not think that for one second China's just lying around, hanging out. Just like with the spheres of influence, weren't the Chinese fighting back? Hello? Just like when the Japanese invade, they're going to be fighting back as well. It's the same kind of thing. They just don't have the opportunity to overthrow them. Um, they continue to clash. Communists gain popular support. And eventually will be the most powerful. Because they're the ones who are actually going to organize everyone to really fight back against the Japanese. Okay? So, Italian aggression. Like we talked about, Benito Mussolini is going to invade Ethiopia. 2,000 troops are going to kill 275,000 Ethiopians. In a period of two weeks. Okay? And they are literally just <coughs> running through villages, killing as many people as they can because they felt humiliated what happened during the scramble, of, uh, scramble for Africa. They're also going to take La uh, Libya and Albania as well. Okay? Germany, of course, is going to withdraw from the League of Nations. He's going to create the Auschwitz. You do need to know this. Auschwitz is with Austria. 
okay? Germany and Austria love each other, but not as much as Austria loves Hungary. Now, does anyone know what famous movie is about Ashley's? Dean? Sound of Music. Uh, if you watched The Sound of Music when you were a little kid, rewatch it. It's a bunch of Nazis running around. And you probably didn't notice that when you were a little kid, but it's a bunch of Nazis. Okay? Now we're going to put pre uh, pressure on the Sudan, and also on Czechoslovakia. Okay, so the Munich Conference we've already covered. Okay? Lightning, uh, Blitzkrieg. Okay, so 1940. You're gonna your next heading is gonna be the fall of France. Sorry, what with, Austria? with what? Austria. Oh, they joined the Ashleys, the Union with Germany. Okay, so the fall of France is gonna happen in 1940, May of 1940. Okay, Germany is going to take over Denmark, Norway, Belgium, and France. France is gonna fall in like four days. They don't do Blitzkrieg on Paris. They keep it intact because Hitler wants to build the largest museum in the world in Berlin. Okay, so he keeps it intact. Have you ever seen the movie Monuments Men? It's a good movie. Um, that's about how Hitler is stealing all the art from Paris, which is why he didn't bomb. All right, so Hitler forces France to sign an armistice agreement, and they're going to create a new state called the Vichy State. V I C H Y. Vichy State is going to be a puppet government. Who's going to raise your hand and tell me what's a puppet government? Absolutely. So, if the Vichy government is in France, who's really running the Vichy government, dude? Germany, absolutely. And you're going to have a resistance movement going as well. All right, to the boards. To the boards. On your whiteboard, please tell me what year <coughs> does England and France declare war? Give me the year, please. you got to keep your ears. you got to know when things are happening. Come on, come on, come on. <coughs> Good. Let's go. What year? Molly. 1939. 1939. Japan is going to invade what country in 1931, but take it all and very plainly do terrible things to it. Don't tell me China because they don't take Manch uh, they don't take China. They take what, Sophia? Manchuria. Manchuria. What is the abuse? What city was abused? Both its men and women and children were stabbed to death as women were exported from this one specific city outward. What is it? Maya. Nanjing. Nanjing. The Japanese are going to sign a non aggression pact with what country? Japanese are going to sign a non aggression pact with what country? Good. What country, Vanessa? Soviet Union. On your whiteboard, please tell me what year does France fall? What year does France fall? Good. Read. 1940. On your whiteboard, if France falls in 1940, what is the only country fighting Germany? Good. What is it? Jessica. Britain, on your whiteboard, please tell me. Uh, Germany is going to sign a non aggression pact with what country? Ru uh, Germany is going to sign a non aggression pact with what country? Max? Huh? USSR. USSR, on your whiteboard, please tell me. What is, uh, what is Hitler's new strategy? That brand new strategy that he's going to use in Poland for the first time. It's incredibly successful. What is it, Micah? Blitzkrieg. On your whiteboard, what is the nickname for Blitzkrieg? Good, good. Alexandra? Lightning. Lightning War. On your whiteboard, what country does Mussolini invade really quickly? Good. What is it? What is it, Jack? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. All right. So, France is going to fall in 1940. The only country left is England fighting. So who is Hitler going to focus all their attention on? England. It's called the Battle of Britain is what that's called. So France is going to fall, and the Battle of Britain begins. It's going to be an intense nine months of fighting. What that means is they're going to be bombed almost three times a day every day. Day. And it's not just on London, it's going to be on the whole country being bombed and attacked. Have you ever read the book The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? 
I've never read it, but apparently it opens up with all the kids getting on a train. The kids are getting on the train because Hitler's bombing Britain in such a fast rate they're trying to save. If you are a non-essential personnel in London, you get sent out into the countryside. So people in the countryside have people living in their barns, have people living in their houses. Everyone in, everybody in England shifts their entire life plan. Okay, and that's what we have. Now, air war is called the Luftwaffe, or I don't know how you say it in German. Um, it is going to just be aerial attack. You can't march into Britain, so they just do aerial bombing, and they just blow it to hell. Who here has ever been to Paris? Okay, would you say it looks like an old city or it looks like a new city? Paris, does it look old or new? Oh, oh, but yes, I have a new building. This is so like they're stuck in 18. Okay? It looks old. Have you been to London? Does that look like a new city or an old city? It's, it's a brand new city. It was built in the 1950s <coughs> because literally it gets completely destroyed by the Germans. Complete <coughs> obliteration by the Germans. Um, most of the buildings had significant damage and had to be torn down and rebuilt. The infrastructure of London had to be completely redone. All the tunnels had to be redone. Um, all of that. So, 40,000 British citizens are going to be killed during urban bombing. Um, Royal Air Force prevents Germans from, bo uh, from invading. Hitler's going to get bored and then focus on Africa here in a second. So, when we talk about the Battle of Britain, we're talking about... So, the fall of France. Here's Hitler dancing because he's so excited he got France. Then, he goes sightseeing. What a weird picture, right? Like, he's just so, like, oh, yeah, here I am, dancing, here I am, okay? Here he is with his military, all over, watching it, Charles de Gaulle. Resistance fighters, will you ever look that cool? I will never look this cool. Resistance fighters in France, fighting the Germans from inside France. I mean, damn it, French people. They make resistance look good, you know? Like, damn. All right, so, Battle of Britain. So the attacks are going to start, okay? Complete destruction. Royal Air Force. This is uh, Piccadilly Circus, okay, one of the largest intersections, one of the largest economic centers in the world is just completely obliterated. And this is what London is going to look like. These are houses, <coughs> buildings. So what would happen is you would, in the morning, you would wake up from your bomb shelter. You would go to wherever the bombing really hit London the night before. You would go and dig them out at 6 a.m. till about 7.30, you'd go home if your house was still there. You would eat your breakfast, get dressed for work. You'd be at work by 9. Then at 9, you'd go to work, work all day. Then you would go home, eat dinner at your house. Then you would go to your bomb shelter, and then you'd do the same thing every single day. Um, of course, you've seen the signs, you know, keep calm, carry on. Okay, that was because of all of this. I mean, this is complete destruction. Okay, so Hitler gets bored and he attacks North Africa, and we have this, uh, the Desert Fox and all that stuff, which is fine. All right, so Operation Barbosa, which is one of my faves. So Hitler, I think we can all agree, Hitler is a liar. Yes? Hitler is a liar. He signed a non-aggression pact with Russia. So he's going to surprise attack Russia. Um, called, and he called it Operation Barbosa. It's a surprise attack of Russia on June 22nd, 1941. By the way, that is my wedding day, June 22nd. It was the like 70th anniversary of it, and I wish that. I was like, we cried today, it's the 70th anniversary. And he's like, what are you talking about? That was like 10 minutes before I walked down the aisle, so at least he knew he was getting a loser. You know what I mean? There was no surprises. Anyway, so Hitler double-crossed Stalin and invaded the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941. You do need to know that date. Okay, so it catches Stalin completely off guard. So on Monday, I am going to show you Enemy at the Gates, which is about six months after um, the, in the Operation Barbosa. Now, Stalin is completely shocked. Completely shocked and is completely unprepared for this war. And it's just going to make it worse. So, Soviets are eventually going to regroup and attack in the spring of 1942. Uh, Stalingrad is where it's going to officially turn in 1943, and that's where my enemy at the gates is. 
I'm so excited for you to see it. If you don't get that permission slip sign that I passed out at the very beginning of my lecture, you don't get to watch it. None of you have seen it, so it's an amazing film. It's so good. It's my favorite World War II film. Um, it earns its R rating. <laughs> like, really earns it. With cursing, <coughs> with death, with everything. So if you don't get it signed, you're going to sit on a bench and wait for us to finish. And it'll be sad because we'll have fun and you'll be lonely. Fun, lonely. Fun, lonely. So get it signed. Yes? What? Should we still have the Yeah. Yeah, it's normally. Yeah. Get it signed. No, you have to have it signed. It's right in front. I'm not allowed to show 16 year olds right in our films. You have to be 18 to see it. So, no. 17. 17? Well, can't show it to you in public school anyway, <laughs> so I have to get the permissions up. And I ain't taking the danger on you people. Hell no. I don't need to be yelled at by Nelson. All right, so Operation Barbosa. So Hitler is going to be completely caught off guard. Uh, is Hitler's going to completely catch Stalin off guard, and we're going to start seeing things are going to change. All right, so Desert Fox, Hitler invades Soviet Union. Okay, it's a complete surprise. Everyone's sad. All right, here we go. Let's get the U.S. involved. So 1941. We have the U.S. involvement for the first time. I don't want that one. I want this one. Okay, so the United States is going to get involved in 1941 with the invasion of Pearl Harbor. Okay, see ya. <laughs>